When it comes to treating respiratory viruses, we usually emphasize supportive care as the mainstay of treatment. And that's mainly because respiratory illnesses are usually self-limited and usually there's no antiviral treatment available. But this is not the case for influenza. The illness can be quite severe and we do have anti-influenza agents available. So let's talk about these antiviral agents. There are two classes approved for use in the US, neuraminidase inhibitors and M2 channel blockers. And the neuraminidase inhibitors are oseltamivir, zanamivir, and paramivir. Oseltamivir is the drug of choice because it's available orally and can be given to all age groups. And as you can tell from their name, these drugs inhibit neuraminidase, and so they prevent the release of influenza virions from an infected host cell. And fortunately, the rate of resistance to neuraminidase inhibitors is only about 1%. But if resistance does occur, it's usually due to a specific histidine to tyrosine substitution in the neuraminidase protein. Now, as far as the M2 channel blockers, remember that M2 protein or M2 channel that we talked about that helps influenza get from the endosome to the cytoplasm? Well, that's exactly what, as you would guess, these M2 channel blockers target. And their names are amantadine and rimantadine. But you may recall that the M2 protein is only present in influenza A. And so these agents are only active against influenza A, unlike the neuraminidase inhibitors, which work against both A and B. Now, not only that, but there's actually increasing resistance to M2 channel blockers among influenza A strains. So not surprisingly, we prefer neuraminidase inhibitors. So these are the influenza therapies we have. And now let's talk about who should receive them. Essentially, anyone who's hospitalized for influenza is sick enough to warrant treatment with an antiviral drug. And therapy should also be offered to outpatients who are at increased risk for complications. And that includes young children, the elderly, immunosuppressed or chronically ill patients, and pregnant women. But what if you're otherwise healthy and suffering from influenza at home? Well, studies have shown that antiviral treatment given within 24 to 48 hours of symptom onset can decrease the overall duration of symptoms even if you're not admitted to the hospital. So anyone can get treated if their doctor thinks it's beneficial. And that means that you don't have to wait for testing results before starting treatment since early initiation means greater impact. But remember that in otherwise healthy people after 48 hours, the drugs are not recommended because they're not going to help. Now finally, these antiviral agents can also be used for chemoprophylaxis in the setting of influenza exposure, but only if you're high risk and you haven't received the vaccine or you've received it less than two weeks prior to exposure. 